How's it going, boys? We're in here for astrophotography, and it's just nice to be out doing another imaging vlog again. Can't remember the last time I did one. If I was more organized, I would have checked my video history. Doesn't matter. The most important thing right now is I think the United Kingdom is drunk because this entire last week has basically been crystal clear skies all week. I think maybe Tuesday it clouded over. But other than that, it's been clear all week. And I've been out every single night. Originally, I wanted to image NGC 1491, which is the fossil footprint nebula. I believe it's up in Perseus. And I dropped some time into it and I just, the results wasn't what I was hoping for. Here's a picture of it here. Just not what I wanted. I think just not enough integration time. In this video, I'm going to be imaging the cave nebula. Now the cave nebula is located in Cepheus and it is far too early in the year to be imaging Cepheus because <laughs> it only really goes above 20 degrees altitude. I think maybe about 11.30 midnight. So mm, probably could have done a bit better target choice. And tonight is going to be the last night tomorrow is Sunday and it's back to normal service rain wind you know misery so <laughs> just absolutely getting as much time as I can right now yeah last night tonight originally I was shooting with the Optolong L enhance uh, but I think because of the local light pollution I have now the village I live in actually up in the sky is nice and dark there's not much light pollution up there all the street lamps in this village seem to be shielded but there's a lot of street lamps around my area around where i live and some of them actually shine into the garden so i kind of felt like the ellen hans just wasn't narrow enough 12 nanometers so i ended up getting myself an l extreme and i've been using it with the asi 533mc pro one really great thing I love about that camera is because it has a small sensor and there's a little like screw adapter you can get, you can put 1.25 inch filters into the nose piece of the camera straight up against the sensor. And because you can use 1.25, you save some money on two inches, which is always a bonus. So for tonight and for this entire project so far, I've been using a Stellar Mira 66 ED refracting telescope which is on loan from first Light optics for review now the stellar mirror it's a 66 millimeters aperture by 400 millimeters focal length in ed doublet which is quite similar to something like my evo star 80 ed obviously less aperture but so far the results have been quite nice i've been enjoying using it the biggest pain in the rear was it has one of those like l foot things for a photo tripod so I've had to really jury rig some dovetails onto it to make it fit and then I really really jury rigged the electronic autofocus onto it as well I don't think it was designed for autofocuses so so far I've been really enjoying using this telescope I'm using a non-reducing flattener in it so I am using the whole 400 millimeters and then at the end of this project, I think I'll then be swapping it out to the 0.8 times reducer flattener, just slightly bit wider field of view. In almost in time for galaxy season, you know, when you really want a wide field telescope, you may have missed a trick by asking for a wide field telescope to review. So the cave nebula is located in Cepheus. It's a large emission based type nebula. So hydrogen alpha, oxygen three, duo narrowband, power filters, duo narrowband kind of target. So that's why I've been using the L Enhance and the L Extreme on it. Um, I don't think I'll be going to the L Pro to get some broadband color. I don't know. Maybe I will put some natural star colors in it. I'm not too sure. But where it is located is quite close to things like the Wizard Nebula, the Bubble Nebula. It's in that kind of area of the sky. And it's on its way up right now. Ideally, probably leaving it another two or three months would have been the better call. But it is what it is i'm imaging it now and it seems to be going well just changing target now over to cepheus we'll see if it actually can see it this time
So it's quarter past 11, it's automatically changed target over to the cave nebula. As we see the, the jellyfish finished and now it's moved on to the cave nebula. And it's gonna be imaging up until quarter past four in the morning. But, you know, so far the session's going well. Guiding is nice and solid, 0.6 seconds of error, total error. I mean, I don't know about you, but I'll take that any day. I feel like maybe it's still a little bit close to the garage, but we'll see. But yeah, here's the plan, what we're looking at. Look at 25 images of 600 seconds. So that's 10 minutes, so 25 10 minute long images. And that's gonna be the last night now. So this is what I've been seeing for the jellyfish. These are some of the raw images for the jellyfish nebula with the yellow extreme. You can just about see right here on the edge of the jellyfish, there's a bit of blue wispy tendrils. I'm hoping that really stays and picks out during the stacking and editing and things like that. The stars look decent, nice and round. So just wait patiently. The first image of the cave nebula is just about to come in. So here it is, and let's do a stretch on it now. Let's do the auto stretch. Yeah. So there's the cave itself. Looks quite nice. Bit of, bit of haloing there around that star. We'll see what happens there. And I can see in the corners particularly, there seems to be, it's, it's still a bit muddy, which I kind of expected because of how low it is still. That should improve as the night goes on. That's what I'm kind of looking at there with the cave nebula. I think as it stands right now, I've got about 13 hours of integration time on it. I don't normally shoot things this often for this long, but you know, as Bob Ross would say, happy little accident. I'm not gonna complain about it. Hopefully it's gonna be a really nice image. So I think using an even wider field of view would help because there's a lot in that area of sky but just making do with what I've got, I'm not gonna complain. I'm having a lot of fun imaging again. Like if you'd caught my video talking about, you know, some of the problems I've had with the hobby, just going back, it's just, just been super good fun again. Just imaging, I've, I'm really enjoying myself once more with this hobby. And that's one of the most important things about hobby, isn't it? To enjoy it. So, I'd really also like to say thank you to the 12,000 subscribers. Can't believe that number and how many people came out and met me at the Practical Astronomy Show, shook your hands, spoke to a lot of you. It was great fun. And I'm just blown away for the continued support that you are showing me on this channel. I really appreciate it. And I don't really think I can sum it up any better than that. I just, I really appreciate your support. So I hope you've really had a chance to capitalize on these clear skies we've had in the United Kingdom, or you've had clear skies yourself, wherever you are. And let me know what projects you've been working on. For now, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoy the image at the end. And until then, keep looking up, keep them cameras clicking. I'll see you later.